Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. Last time I took a look at the Sonos IKEA Symphonist speaker. Usually in my reviews, I do my speaker leaderboard where I rank the different speakers, and I also do a sound demo. And so last time the video was getting a little bit long, so I decided to split it into two parts. Well, you guys asked for it, so here it is. In addition, you guys told me in the comments that there's something called True Play, and it's a way that Sonos uses to calibrate the speaker to your room. And I didn't know about it because it's not available on Android, so I decided to use my iPad and I did that whole thing, went through the whole process. This is a comparison to see how it sounded with it on and off. So in addition to the frequency response of the Symphonist speaker, I also want you to take a look and see how it compares with True Play on versus off. What I want you to take away from this is not so much how it actually sounded in my room, but more so what the differences are. And so it gives you an insight as to what Sonos is doing when they use that True Play feature. And so the problem with my methodology here is my speakers were close up when I did the before and after. And I think Sonos is optimizing more for a typical listening situation, which is not right up to the speaker, you know, less than three feet away. That's not typical. So they're trying to accomplish something where they're making it sound good in the entire room and my mics weren't placed in a typical listening position. So keep that in mind when you say, hey, you know what, I don't like the way that sounds. It's more to get an idea about what the speakers are actually doing. So here it goes.
Okay, so we're here again. We're taking a look at the frequency response measurements in room. So this is in my room. And let's take a look first at the Symphonisk. And this is how it looked when I just took the measurement directly from the speaker. No true play enabled. And this is with true play on. So they had me doing that funny stuff. And this is what happened after true play. So it's kind of interesting if you look at the two. The original one had a little bit of, of a bass boost here from what, you know, about 60 hertz all the way up to, you know, even 500 and then it dips down here. And then you have a boost in the treble response after five kilohertz. And you take a look at the true play, with true play on, it looks like they took away some of this bass bump here, right? So let's just say from 800 down to 130 hertz. They took some energy away from there, but they added it over here. So they actually extended the frequency response for the lows, let's say 120, 130 hertz and below. And so that gives you the impression that the speaker can hit lower, which, you know, with this DSP correction, it actually does. And so I kind of calibrated this for around 83 decibels. 80 dB is, is the minus three dB point, the F3. And that's at 50 Hertz, which is pretty good for a three inch driver. And F6, let's just say about 45 Hertz. Now that, you know, of course take that with a grain of salt because what they're probably doing is they're allowing it to hit this low until it hits its X max, which is its excursion limits. And then it'll probably start managing this base. So it's not increased by this much and it'll start flattening out a little bit more the louder you turn it up. This is more of that V-shaped response with true play on. So before it kind of kind of had more of just a bass bump, right? And a, a bump in the treble, but not as V-shaped and as obvious as this here. So interesting to note, the treble for the most part stayed pretty much the same. And let's see what they did with the mid range. I think they just kind of flattened it out a little bit more from here to here. They kind of flattened it out. So you have this. So pretty cool. I like the technology. I'm not sure that this is the curve that I'd be targeting, but hey, I think the cool thing is that they do allow you to use your tone controls to adjust this to your own personal preference. Okay, so we're here at the speaker leaderboard and let's rate some of this stuff. So first the Ikea Sonos Symphonic speaker. Uh, they are powered speakers. Let's see, I will have to place these T-Zeros, no. Even the home pod is a little bit better than that. Maybe around this area and be 42 X. This is tough. I would say better than that. Better than this one. Let's put it right here, right below the PB 42 X. Now for a bookshelf speaker, I would say same thing right under the PB 42 X. I would definitely not recommend them for desktop because there's no way to connect them but they are $99 for a single one. So I don't know if I should put this under under 100 or under two because this requires, you know, we're talking about stereo pairs, right? We're not talking about single speakers. So let's see, these would have to go down below at under 200 bucks. So oh, that's rough. They're in a tough category here. Um, this Vizio soundbar wasn't as accurate, but it did have more bass with that sub. So, you know, right around here, right around here. Yeah. I might even put this one above. Oops. Yeah. So there now keep in mind that for the feature set, it's pretty good. You know what you're able to do to connect to the entire Sonos ecosystem. That's pretty cool. Um, and then last but not least. Let's see how these place and uh, best overall. Let me just let it hang out here for a second. I'm going to put it right here, right above these, the BenQ Travolo 2. Now let's take a look at the Sonos Beam. So this is a powered speaker. I was pretty impressed with what this thing could do. I would say it's right around the same territory as this HomePod, whether it's above or below. I think the HomePod was just a little bit more impressive with the way that they were making bass come out of that thing. I'll put it right here, right below that. And Sonos Beam as far as the best overall. You know what? I would probably prefer it over the Vizio soundbar. 
MB42X, that's going to be tough to beat these. Feature set, I, I would say feature set, I could place it above these, but we're not looking at feature set. We're looking at the best overall sound. And so best overall, I would say right here above the Vizio soundbar. And last but not least, we have the Sonos subwoofer. Has some, some really tough competition here. SVS, SVS, my DIY one, I don't know why that's there. Um, Elac sub, um, I would have to put this one above the Elac sub because it was able to hit lower. Uh, mine, hmm, it could even possibly go above the one that I built because it does also hit, I think a little bit lower. Um, I'm not sure, I have, I have to take a look at these two, but anywhere, something like this, these two can switch either way. So that's it. So there you have it. Now you have an idea what True Play actually does. I would advise for you guys out there, if you have Sonos and you have this feature, you have iOS, I would say try it on and off and see which one you actually like. Try it with different types of music, Try to make sure you try it with some vocals and music that you know and see which one sounds better to you. Anyway, that's it. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you to you guys for letting me make these videos. Your support means a lot to me, so thank you. If you're not already a supporter, I have podcasts and some behind the scenes stuff at patreon.com forward slash Joe Intel. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye bye.